Hey guys, and welcome back to Regrets It. Brexit England. There's no thumbs up today because, you know, I'm not Boris Johnson. I don't like, expect a pat on the back every time I get something right. Do you know, I've just seen Amanda Holden on the telly, right? You know, and she's in Poland, right? You know, she's gone over there to help. Right? She's taken her blonde head over there to help. And obviously she's a big name. So people are going to, you know, people are going to focus on that. And she's doing a podcast as well. Right? So she's, she, you know, she's she's seen what's going on over there. And I think someone must have, from, from the Ukraine has hit her up on Insta. Right? And Amanda Holden has said, you know what? This is too much. It's too much. I need to do something about this. And she's... And you know what? You know what? She stayed true to her word and she got herself over there to go and help. Say so very nice of her. But you know, the problem, there's a problem that I face with, with this type of thing, right? Is that Amanda Holden has just criticised Pretty Patel. She's basically called her a racist home secretary. I'm saying it only took. Yeah, for Amanda Holden to see white people, right, in a situation, right, where they're fleeing a war zone, for her to take notice, right, that the world, right, is can be an evil place. But why has Amanda Holden never, ever come out, right, in support of the people of Palestine or said anything about what is going on in Yemen? And also, welcome back to By Any Means Necessary. Thank you so much for all your messages sent me. And a special thanks to everybody who signed up to my channel. I feel so blessed with so much people that have signed up. So thank you so much for that. I'll go for all your messages. I'll answer as many as I can. But I will like all the messages for definite. So we've got COVID is back. You know, the hospitals are filling up with, um, COVID, with, with COVID patients. And obviously they're talking about now a, um, a fourth booster. Right, for the over 60s, over 65s, you know. But obviously, um, you know, all, all of our restrictions have, have completely gone when it comes down to COVID. I mean, they, they, you know, there's even talk about, you know, people paying for, for um, tests because, you know, that's, that's a part of levelling up, right? So, they, they, you know, they want people to pay for tests and that. But, you know, from what I've seen on the news and that, COVID is coming back in a really, really strong way and the hospitals are filling up more and more. Me? I wear a mask in every shop I go in. You know, sometimes I'm, I'm in the shop and I'm, I'm the only person with a mask and, and I'm looking at all these people and I'm thinking to myself, all you diseased motherfuckers need to keep the motherfucker away from me. And I don't know if you saw this story yet yeah, about this 17-month-old child that was um, killed by a dog in, um, in Merseyside. Uh, now, you know, I do, look, I'll just tell you straight, right, these parents right are some of the most stupid people on the planet very very stupid people i mean just ridiculously stupid you know you, you just have to look at these people and think what the fuck was you thinking right i'll ask you this question first of all all right is it a good idea for you to leave a dog right in a hot car Right, with all the windows closed. Now, if you have answered, well, I don't know, or well, I suppose it would be okay, then you are the type of person whose child can be killed by a dog. If you've answered, if, if you are, because this child was 17 months old, right? Now, this, these people only had this dog for one week all right now i've haven't heard of a puppy killing a child right because if you introduce a dog into your family right when you have a small child right that dog needs to be a puppy it doesn't need to be a fully grown dog. If you introduce a fully grown dog, right, into your family, right, you know, that you've, you've only had this fully grown dog for one week and you're going to leave what, you're going to leave that dog around your child. Are you sick in your fucking ass? Right? You, you have to be sick to do something like that. You know, even if, right, you've had the dog, right, for, you know, for 10 years, 
before you before you have a child, right? It's very you know some dogs right will will look after that child right and not let anything at all happen to that child, right? But some dogs will look at that child and and get jealous, right? You know you can't introduce right a fully grown dog right into the life of a baby. Right, you know, you, you know, I don't understand the stupidity of how stupid you must be for you to have done something like that. You know, you know, these parents, right, should be dragged to court, right, for 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 willful neglect because this is ridiculous. It's a completely ridiculous thing for them to have done. You know, you know, it's one of just a story that you just look at and think to yourself, are these people fucking psychos? You know, you know, they must be psychos. Because when I first saw this story, yeah, I thought, oh, this is this is terrible, right? And then when I heard, well, they've only had the dog for a week. I said, well, if you've only had the dog for a week, right, how the hell, right, can you leave your dog, right, with a child that's 17 months old? You can't have that dog around the child at all. The dog don't know the child. The dog might have come from a home, right, where, where it was, where, where it was battered by one of the children who live in that home. But you're going to go and take that dog around your 17-month-old baby. <sighs> Seriously, these people have a fucking screw loose. Right? And did you not see um, Nazardine Zagari Radcliffe, right, in her press conference yesterday? She's really pretty, actually. Right? But she was in her press conference yesterday, right, um... And, you know, we're all really happy to see her back. But this woman, right, is ungrateful. That's how people are describing her. She, oh, she, she's so ungrateful. Say so what? Because she's brown. And why? So why is she ungrateful? What? what? You, you give me a reason why she's ungrateful. So she's so un And what was, what was um, trending yesterday um, after her interview? Hashtag ungrateful. You know, the thing was, right, what you've got to understand about this whole situation, right, is that when Pretty Patel, Pretty Patel, what's Pretty Patel got to do with this, right? When Pencil Neck, Tin Lizzie Truss, <coughs> sorry, right, got involved in this, right? And you know something, yeah? I was watching some Carry On films the other day, right? And I was watching, oh, well, Kenneth Williams was playing a star. You know Kenneth, we know Kenneth Williams, yeah. I once knew a man named Reg who went with a girl in the hedge. His wife came along with a big carving knife and cut off his meat and two veg. That Kenneth Williams, 1963. And I wasn't born then, so that I wasn't born then, right? But anyway, right, so I was watching the well, and it's the one with the um when Kenneth Williams is playing like he's playing like a Dr. Frankenstein type character, right? And you know, what really struck me is I saw Liz Truss, right, there, starring as Odd Bod Jr. <laughs> right? Because Liz Truss, yeah, because, you know, the, um, the Karen Bob, what, what Liz Truss is busting right now, yeah, makes her head look quite kind of square. <laughs> right? You think, you think I'm always looking to pick on Liz Truss, but... You know, she makes it easy. Right, but anyway, right, so Liz Truss, right, when Liz Truss, right, you know, became the um the, the foreign secretary, right, you know, and she was and she was speaking about like, you know, Nazarene Zagara Ratcliffe at the time and that, you know, and we all thought, you know, it's it's very bold, right, and you know I mean it's a good idea, it's a it's a bit wild what she was because I was in the meeting. A bit wild what she was saying and we was thinking to ourselves well i don't know because it's a little bit out there yeah and none of us were sure right whether or not it was going to work or not right but we thought you know what we just have to like say you know what we have to run with it and see what happens see if see if, see if liz trusts can, can pull this off and I mean Liz Truss's idea I mean was very bold and she just came into that meeting right and I mean she was very precise and decisive of what she wanted to do of the whole situation and I mean when she raised the point and she just come in and she just said listen what I'm going to do I'm going to pay the debt and we was like 
What? This has never been tried before. Right? You mean... You're just going to... No, that... We couldn't see how it was going to work. And then, right, you know, just all of a sudden, out of nowhere, right, Liz Truss, right, got that debt paid. And Nazarene Zagari Radcliffe was released a week later. So, and and five home secretaries later. And, you know, Nazarene Zagari Radcliffe was like, well, how many home secretaries does it take, yeah, to have someone released from prison? And I was like, uh, me, 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 five, five, five. These people really want a pat on the back for this shit. And so, well, seriously. And they want to know why the woman's ungrateful, right? The woman's ungrateful because she spent six years in prison, right, for a debt that you owed. You know, even the courts told Britain that they owed the debt. And you know, right, in 2013, right, the Iranians sent a delegation to Britain, right, to come and speak about this debt. And what happened to the delegation? They got arrested. <laughs> They arrested them. They arrested the day. <laughs> you could only make this up, right, if you was writing fiction books. Books with fiction in them. That's the only way you could make this shit up. <laughs> they arrested them, right? No wonder the Iranians was really pissed, right? Because the Iranians were, took this to court. Right, they won the court case that said Britain, you owe Iran this money. Give them back their money before they have to send Dog the bounty hunter in for your ass. But no, they're just the Britain was just like no, 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 no. We're some buddy boys, yeah. And you didn't see what we've done to Argentina over the Falklands. So don't make us come and do that to you. Right. So that's why they, that's that's why the Iranians took Nazarene. Right, and now people are like, "Well, oh, she's ungrateful because she's brown." <laughs> Seriously, oh dear, right? And um, the royals are having a real, a real hard time in um, on their Caribbean. Um, you know, they're going around the Caribbean because the queen's, um, I think, uh, one of some, one of her jubilees is coming up. Uh, for how long that she's how long that she's on their ass, right? So they've already been they've already been told right, that they're not wanted on one island. They were told, "Don't come hell. We don't want you hell, right?" And today they're going to Jamaica, right? And the Jamaicans is like, "Well, to be honest, yeah, we don't want them people. They'll come here, right?" I'm going to tell you that, right? The Jamaicans have actually said, "You know what, yeah." If it was Harry, it would have been all right. But William, you know, we not bother with William. Now, I've just realised, yeah, that these people are as shallow as me. What? Because Harry is married to a black woman. All of a sudden. <laughs> now, you know, Jamaicans are like, yeah, yeah, man, send Harry. No, but I said William. Send Harry. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. Right, and people say, because people keep saying to me, well, oh, so all of a sudden, right, you're a royalist, right, because the Queen come out in support of Black Lives Matter. I said, yes, I am. <laughs> but I'm not a royalist. But I have a support, uh, you, know, I, you know, I have an affection for the Queen, especially as she come out for Black Lives Matter, because that has made me, that, that, that's given me the ammunition, yeah, to shut down a whole heap of people, right? Because when they started talking, I just say, well, are you telling me that the Queen is a Marxist? Is, is that what you're saying? I just, I just break it down and say, well, so, because before I could use the footballers, I said, well, what, you're telling me all those Premier League footballers are Marxists, all of them, the ones taking the knee. They're all what they're. they're and when the Queen came out and said, "Well, I'm in," so you know, I'm a supporter of Black Lives Matter, because let me tell you something about the Queen. Yeah, she didn't need to come out and say that, but she did. All right, so that's so that's the thing. But anyway, the Jamaicans now, right? Because you know, only a month ago, yeah, they tried to pull down the um, statue of Queen Victoria. Right. So that should have really been telling the royal family something. Right. And let me tell you, 
right? You see all of this, right? What's happening to Britain all around the world? It's all because of Brexit. Because Britain, right, has really shown itself for who it is around the world. Because remember, right, that Britain, right, was one of the main forces to go across the world, right? And, you know, dodo eyes, right, races of people. That's a new word that I've just made up, right? Because the dodo was extinct. And these people, right, have extinct races of people. They, you know, they virtually extinct the Native Americans. Virtually extinct them. The, you know, and the Aborigines virtually extinct them as well. The Maui's, right? All these people, right? You, if you go to Canada now, right? There's, they, you know, they're they're digging up like mass graves, right, of indigenous people that was just murdered, right? So you know, it would be good, right, if you know the the Native Canadians and the Native Americans and the Native Australians just stood up now and said, you know something, yeah, you've had our countries for long enough. Now you need to leave. These countries do not belong to you. Get your ass back to Europe. That would be good. Because my ass would go and live in, but I might go and live in Australia with the, with the Aborigines. Right? I've always liked beachfront property. Right? But that's what the truth is. All these countries yeah, should, should be doing what the Jamaicans are doing today and saying, you know something, yeah? you've had this shit for long enough. Now get the fuck out. Right? Cause, because right, you know, the Europeans do not have rights to none of these countries. Australia. Canada, New Zealand, America, don't have rights to none of these countries, right? And you, you people really need to get the fuck out of these places because you don't have a right to be there. Get your fucking asses back into fucking Europe, right? That's what, that is the truth. That's what you really need to do, you know? And let me tell you, right, Brexit has put a main focus Right, on this country, right, where people are saying, you know something, we're such a motherfucking hate filled nation of people. Why should we respect them? Why should we respect them? Right, you know, Argentina, right, will soon be taking back something like the Falklands. Right, I'm telling you, because you know something, yeah, Britain's reputation around the world is just trashed, right, and all of that, right, is down to the Brexit vote. Most of it is. It's what it's down to. It's down to the Brexit vote. You know, even this morning, right, that worm, Calvin Robinson, right, was on, um, was on, good, was, was on GMB speaking about, obviously, what, what's going on in Jamaica. Do you know what I mean? You know, trying to, um, you know, speak, speak up the um, benefits of colonialism. Right? And this is the reason why, yeah, because about four or five years ago, right, I was accused, and wait for this, because I was, um, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I was accused of racially abusing Calvin Robinson on Twitter. Because right? I called his ass a house negro. Well, I called him a house nigger. Right? But, you know, I was like, well, and then a couple of his colleagues, yeah, right, like, sent me some messages saying, oh, you, 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 you called him a, you, you, how dare you? Right? I was like, what you mean, that breadfruit? Calvin Robert. Now, when a black man calls another man a breadfruit, this can go two ways. Because right? it could either mean that your head is shaped like a breadfruit, or it could just mean like, you know, just a normal, right? That, you know, dark on the outside, light on the inside, right? So I said, what you mean that breadfruit? You mean the coconut, right? The Malteser, banana, right? And I think that that you know, was quite, um, <laughs> right? I, you know, Twitter never threw me off. I was like, well, you know, it's kind of difficult you know, for a black man to racially abuse another black man. Right? That's just a lot of nonsense. Right? And, you know, yesterday, yeah, we did ask, right? I asked about, you know, obviously, you know, the whole Kanye West thing, because, you know, we, you know, we, we have offered him up as a swap. Right, and so far we haven't had any takers because you know we was asking for you know for maybe Gary Lineker or David Beckham, but we are we have we've had another meeting in the black community, and we have decided that we will settle right for Paul Gascoigne, right, and to sweeten the deal, right, we will throw in James Cleverly for you, 
So you can have Cleverly and Kanye West and we'll take Paul Gascoigne. And I think that that's a great deal. And I think I've gone well over my time again. Well, <laughs> I can't believe I just do this every single day. Anyway, guys, this is by any means necessary. I'm DMC John Ribs. It was really nice to speak to you guys. Comments below.